Hey everyone, uh, the title to my talk is, uh, is very prominent that you hear on the screen. My name is Elton, I, uh, I work for SRXD, uh, very briefly, hopefully we can pin mouse everybody. Um, very briefly about what we do, SRXP is, uh, is a mobile expense reporting solution. So basically in a nutshell you have a mobile app, you take a picture of your receipt when you're out having lunch with someone, then it shows up at your boss and your boss is supposed to pay you back. And it's great for you because you don't have to keep the super paper receipt around and it's great for your boss because he has easy administration. Um, we recently, I'd say recently, but it's not actually recently, I think one and a half, two years ago, we started rewriting uh, our system using complete separation of concerns, so an API and uh, an Ember.js app. And this is where my interesting query params come from. I think this has been the thing that I've been involved with most when it comes to Ember.js. Uh, not always because I wanted to, but often because I had to. Let's just look at a common pattern, uh, for instance, in the SRXP app. So let's say we have this is one of our routes, expenses. We want to produce a list of expenses. This is, this is our, our main URL state, but this list of expenses um, may have to be uh, sorted or uh, we want to filter it. And there you are, query parameters. This is, this is the, the one clear use case for query params, is where you have extra state that is not necessarily incorporated in the standard Ember uh, URL state. And, um, so we have here uh, before I go to that. Um, so because we need this, and this pattern is really common in our app, um, it, it really bothered me for a long time this this was not part of the Ember core. And why was it not part of the Ember core? Because a lot of people needed this, obviously. There, there was a lot of talk about this, a lot of people coming up with, with custom solutions, weird solutions. Um, but there were, there were a couple of issues. As, as, as simple as this may seem, this pattern, there were a couple of fundamental issues, which is why it took so long to get something in the Ember core. And I will talk about that uh, briefly. First of all, you know, the Ember, like, like many things, has a, configuration, uh, a convention over configuration uh, policy, meaning you want to make something that is very logical that a lot of people will use, but you want to be able to override it using configuration. But here we have this conceptual problem that uh, there are two distinct, equally valid use cases for query parameters. The first is model, so route-based uh, parameters, and the second is controller-based. Let me briefly explain what I mean by this model route-based example for uh, what we are using at SRSP. If you have a list of expenses, this might be 300, 400 items long, you don't know. Uh, you only fetch like the first 50 of them, maybe only even 20. If you want to sort this list, you need to have the server sorted because you can't sort it client side because you don't have all the expenses. If you want to do pagination, this all has to go through the server. So for us, if a query parameter changes, we want to do a request to the server, get the new content displayed on screen. But I can imagine an equally valid use case where uh, you have all the data in your controller, say it's only 50 items, you want to do the sorting client side. You don't want to enforce a pattern onto people where you have a query parameter that changes and then they have to do a new request to the server, even though all the logic required to do what they want to do, which is just sorting the data, is already there. So this was a fundamental issue that was discussed for a while. Then there is the other uh, problem of the query string. In a traditional environment that most of you probably know, like an MVC server-side framework, you have one endpoint, which is your controller action. And this endpoint just got into all state, whereas in Ember, you have many endpoints. Any, any one of these parts of the URL can correspond to a route, and that route has a model, and it renders a view. And yet we have only one query string. So what are we going to do with this? How do we uh, decide which part of the query string belongs to the route, uh, to which route? When, when do we refresh a route? When do we update our hierarchy? This, this is a hard problem. I personally, when, when this came up, was a big fan of the uh, matrix parameter approach, which is, so you have the semicolon separating uh, uh, all parameters for each path. Um, but apparently, some people were opposed to this because it would be unfamiliar, it would scare people away, and uh, the semicolon scared off some, uh, some used web servers, which is a problem when you have push state implementation and you have, need the actual URL to route your client-side application. So this was another problem. 
But like I said, there was a clear need for this, so everyone who needed this at some point, I tried to delay it as long as possible, but at some point you just have to implement this if you want to complete your app. Um, so people started brewing their own. And first was uh, Alex Speller's Ember Query, which solved a, a particular set of, of problems, which is mainly Alex's problems. Uh, I, I think he, he started this like me, he needed something, he wrote it, then he generalized it a little bit put it on GitHub for other people to use. And um, unfortunately, the, the set of problems that he solved was slightly different from the set of problems that I wanted to solve or needed to solve for our app. So I wrote my own, which is called Ember Query Params. This is not at all confusing. Uh, <laughs> everyone understands which is which. No, um, the two things that these libraries had in common, uh, uh, there are several things that these libraries had in common. They were both uh, they have global query strings. I, I, I dropped the matrix parameters so because I thought there were re good reasons for it. They're, they have global query strings. They were route based, that means the route registered uh, which query parameters it was listening to, and there was some magic trickery in the background going on to decide how should we refresh this route. And because Ember wasn't really supporting it, they were both very, very hacky. They were monkey patching all sorts of stuff onto there, especially the router code, which is all nicely enclosed, enclosures, you never need to worry about it. But if you want to change it, you can't, you just have to copy the code, paste it in your own stuff, and then you can override the class maybe, and weird stuff is going on. It was very, very hacky. So uh, Alex and I then started thinking, well, we need to have this stuff natively in Ember. So well, started thinking about it, talking about it had some conceptual uh, uh, disagreements actually and this was summer, I think it was August 2013 when we were talking about this right around the time that I went on a nice three week vacation and when I came back he'd done the bulk of the work and then uh, he actually done so many and I was so busy that this was pretty much the end of my involvement with, with writing this, I've been following it uh, ever since because I was still needing it obviously um, this, but this first native implementation, um, it looked a lot like, like the plugins that we wrote. So again, it was route based. Uh, this time you actually registered the parameters that you were using in your router config. So you said something like uh, this dot resource and then you specified which query params you could use. But it had some very, very nasty API influences that the first parameter to your model hook would optionally be a query params object. It was, all in all, just wasn't very nice, and I think that everyone involved felt that, because um, a few weeks later, it was actually replaced by something better, which was confusing for everyone involved, because the docs were already online, everyone had already rewritten to use the new stuff, so when I updated, like, just pulled Ember Master, which I do every once in a while, once it's, as long as it's not stable. Uh, everything just broke down, the docs were just swapped out silently without anyone figuring it out. But I think uh, the, the thing that they now have done is, is very clean. Um, it's a very good approach, and I would like to talk about that a little bit. So, first of all, um, the most major change in the second native implementation is conceptually the controller is now the governor of the query parameters, no longer the router. So this means that in your controller, uh, you specify which query parameters you want. For instance, here I've specified that uh, sort var on my controller is linked to sort in the URL. And um, this is something I, I, I did this on purpose because um, uh, sort is actually a, a function of array. So if you would do this, just plain sort, then you would get a problem with the, with the parameter name. I run into this using the filter, I think. Um, but you can alias it, it's great. And if you, actually if you update the sort var of the controller, it just synchronizes with the URL. If you update it in the URL, it's right there in your controller. So you have two things here. Um, I'm getting back to this later, so you'll never have a sort and a page, which is a number. Um, the second thing you have to do is, uh, because previously, we kind of had this naming convention, if you had a, a post route, then you would have a post controller, but that was all the connection there was. It, you could just swap it out, use a different controller if you wanted to. They kind of more closely connected uh, the controller and the route, um, and provide a nice configuration option. Because now, you can 
Uh, I, I don't know if you saw that I named the previous controller sort of post controller. That's just for the example to show that this controller name property has been around slightly longer than the query parameters, but you can actually now, it's now more important that you can decide which controller belongs to your route. Because as you can see in the model, if we uh, receive any requests with query params that correspond to this controller, then they're also received as params in our model. And this is a new thing that they did. So routes and controllers are now more closely intertwined. Um, and this provides us with a nice uh, an, another option. So by default, actually, the controller-based scenario is the one that is uh, that, that you should be concerned about. There's no route refreshing going on, nothing. Just controller variable syncs with URL variable. But you can listen to events from the controller that tell you that these variables have updated, and then decide to update your model. So uh, the first way to do that is uh, using the above just specify on your route the query params. Uh, this is the configuration key, it's not arbitrary name, it's just query params. You specify which query parameter sort in this case, and you specify you have to want, want to refresh the model whenever it is changed. Um, the alternative is you listen to the query params did change event, and you check which query param is in there, whether you want to refresh your model. And uh, that refresh me method, that is, I think it's very, uh, very valuable even without the query parameters, because everyone likes to refresh their data every now and then, and it would be, it, it used to be a pain if you just wanted to refresh a single model, or single route. So, this brings some, some, some final extra awesomeness. Um, we set our default to date descending last, I think. So if we set it to date descending, it's going to show up in the URL, and if you set it back to the default, it's going to recognize that it's the default, and it's going to remove it from the URL. These are actually things that they uh, they changed uh, not so long ago, maybe a month back. And finally, type recognition. So um, the default value of page in our initial example was a number. So if we update our URL to say we want to go to page three, and then it's going to recognize, hey, I need to cast this to a number. So that's basically it. That's the uh, the new query parameters implementation. Um, I could explain the whole thing in in, a, in three slides, even though we've been uh, we've been whining about it for uh, for over a year. <laughs> I have a question. That's good. Cause, uh, questions. Uh, questions. Sorry. Right. Um, so I was cruising the docs yesterday and. Yeah, there's still a warning message saying, hey, this query parameter stuff is not... It's, it's in Canary. Yeah, it's in yeah. Canary, yeah. yeah. So that, I suppose that doesn't mean that they just might uh, change it around again on you. But um, I have the feeling that they won't do it this time, because uh, this is the first implementation that I like. You know that somehow, so, sometimes when you, when you program something, and even if you, you're building something that does what you want, but you still kind of feel that it's wrong, right? We, I, I think we all know that feeling. Um, I add that with the, the first uh, uh, two billion implementations, but with this one, I kind of feel that this is the way that they are supposed to be doing it. So, so I think. But this is two router, uh, sorry, query params 2.0, right? Um, the, it's are we the, 2.1? The, 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 the feature is called query params new, okay. which is excellent versioning, if you ask me. So maybe they'll get a new, new, but I, I, th I think this one's going to stick. Okay, yeah, so I guess the question, since you're following it, um, do you have any idea when it's going to hit uh, beta build? No, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what's keeping it right now, but um, it's, as far as I'm concerned, I'm stable. We're doing some pretty freaky stuff with it. Uh, uh, so you're using it? Right? Yeah, we're using it. We're okay, using yeah. it. Yeah, we're, I'm, they I'm they doing changed some... something to it yesterday. Hmm? They changed something to it yesterday. Did they? So, <laughs> uh, it's a bug fix, but for example, okay. we, we had a crash with, uh, with based on query params. I, I and they, they, they merged the pull request fixing it yesterday. Okay. So that I mean, there are, and I think there are actually like 10 pull requests still out there related to query params new. So right. probably until those are all merged or closed, they'll, yeah. they'll hold off. Yeah, they'll, they, they might have some failing tests or anything. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's stable. We're, like I said, we're, we're doing some stuff with multiple nested routes who have their different query params in the thing and it's working just fine. So if that freaky stuff works, and it didn't used to work on 
on any of the plugins except the things that I specifically designed for it. Uh, then I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's stable. But you have to build it. Yeah, you have to uh, uh, enable it. It's feature flag, so you can enable it in the, uh, the features.json file, and you have to build Ember yourself. But, uh, it's so, in one of your earlier slides, you showed, showed the, the semicolons to have params per part of the. Yeah, there was is, that, like, is that still supported? In no, that was, that was never supported. Right. Actually, I, I, a... uh, I, th I think I think I might have a, uh, a, a a branch somewhere hidden deeply inside my Ember fork on GitHub that does support this. But, yeah. Um, so yeah, now the, you just put all the at the end. Yeah. Normal, so you have to normal, take uh, you have to take care of namespacing yourself. Yeah. What I, what I dislike about it. One of the things I dislike about it is that you cannot have arbitrary query params because you don't know which route they would belong to. So you have to specify every single one of them that you're going to use, you have to specify it uh, beforehand. But maybe they'll support something like, like reg regular expressions later. Or I don't know. I think this is already pretty... Uh... So any other questions? All right, well, uh, thanks for...